Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. The payoff is murder. Another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice, danger's my stock and trade. If it's touch and go with trouble and you want out, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Dear Mr. Valentine, maybe you've heard of my husband, Johnny Wyatt. Just a notch higher than a club fighter. Big strong boy who hasn't gotten anywhere. Well, Friday night he meets Pat Driscoll at the Christopher Arena and the payoff is all set. But not if Johnny plays it my way. Then the payoff might be murder. Still, I want to take... Maybe my reasons for this are a little cockeyed. But if you're interested, let's talk it over. And it's signed, Doris Wyatt. Hmm. Christopher Arena, Brooksy. Sounds like old home week. Remember? Remember? I had to sit there and watch you get worked over just to satisfy the ego of a vicious little gangster named Salvador. Ah, the late Johnny Salvador. So now there's a Douglas Harger running all of his rackets. It's enough to make a growing boy turn cynical. One thing's certain from Mrs. Wyatt's letter... The air around Christopher Arena still has an odor from here to there and back again. Yeah. With Harger in the picture, the fight could very well be a fix. But why should an ever-loving wife want to change the payoff so it might read murder? Well, George, she admitted her reasons might sound a little cockeyed. But just how cockeyed? All right, Mr. Valentine, I'll tell you why I'm not going to let Johnny throw that fight Friday night. Yeah, Mrs. Wyatt? Because I've never had a mink coat. Huh? What's that? Exactly what I said, Miss Brooks. Well, pardon my dunce, Camp, but if your husband played along with Harger, that would be about as short a cut to a mink coat as you'd want. And you still don't seem to get it. The first time I ever saw Johnny, I was in a chorus line. I think I wanted a mink coat more than I wanted to breathe. And I could have had it even with a wedding band. But I picked Johnny. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Yeah. You loved him. It's more than that. For ten whole years, I've had to stand by while he was getting his face pushed in. But at least he was always doing a clean, honest job. The only job he knew. But uh, how do you think we can help you if Johnny's made up his mind? You can help me change it. Now, wait a minute. Look, Harger and his crowd have already placed their bets. They're not going to let Johnny or anybody else cross him. I know. Uh, anyway, this is a little out of my line, Mrs. Wyatt. I, I wouldn't know how to go about this. And I wouldn't know what to tell you. Oh, maybe I've got a one-track mind. A gasoline station along the road, a, an auto court. And who knows, maybe we could still have a couple of kids. Funny where you can wind up dreaming of a mink coat. Sorry I bothered you, Mr. Valentine. Forget it. Well, now, wait a minute. Let me think about this. Hey, Doris! Doris! I want... Oh, you got company, huh? Where have you been, Johnny? Training. You know, honey, Friday night, the big payoff. Look at you. How much do you think you'll have to drink after Friday to forget what you did? You know, I'm only doing this for you, Doris. Hey, who are these people? We shouldn't be talking like this in front of You don't have to worry about them. Go on. Get out, both of you. Get out. I want to talk to my wife. Might be a good idea if you did a little listening, Johnny. Who are you to tell me what to do? I get enough of that. Get him out of here. This Doris, be... is Mr. Valentine. I thought he could figure a way you could still fight an honest fight and not get hurt. You mean you, you told him? She was only thinking of you. Get out. Get out. I told Stop you. Stop it, Johnny. Out. Stop it. This is one time your fists aren't going to help you. After the fight, I'm... I'm leaving you. For good. You... You what? Leaving you. But, baby, it's ten years. Things we had planned. This was going to be my last fight. Doris, you don't know what you're saying. You, you can't. You can't Take do it. Take it easy now. Here, fella, sit down. Put yourself together. <laughs> now, look... Yeah. If you're willing to try, I'll see if I can get you off the spot. Oh, Johnny, please listen to him. What about it, Johnny? 
Go ahead, mister. Okay. You think you got it in you to beat this Driscoll guy Friday? I think I can take him. Got at least one good fight left in the court. Besides, Driscoll thinks it's all fixed. He's been doing his training in nightclubs. Oh, but there's nothing you can do about it now, Valentine. You, you don't double-cross Hogger and get away with it. Well, you didn't fix this thing, Johnny. It was Steve Helianos. Your manager did all the talking for you. You got a contract with this Helianos? Sure, sure, but I had no trouble getting out of that. Steve's been jipping me for years. Well, what's the word, Johnny? Just what you know it would be if I thought I was going to lose you. Well, it looks like you've got another date at the Christopher Arena, George. Yeah. Okay, we don't have much time. Get him under a cold shower, Doris. Fill him full of black coffee. Yeah. What do you train, Johnny? Murray's Gym, 8th Street. I got took that place over from Salvador, too. Well, don't go near the place. Use the gym at the YMCA until you hear from me. What are you going to do? See a man who has more reason than any of us to hate Hager and everything he stands for. A man who hated Johnny Salvador enough to kill him. George, the bash. But that guy's punch drunk. They got him locked away in a sanitarium. Uh-huh. But I think he can still make the kind of sense that'll give us a fighting chance. Now, Brooksy. Yes, George. I'll pick you up at the office. Right now, it's time for a couple of characters to get a shock treatment. Here, listen, my friend. Where do you get off telling me how to run my business? Aren't you forgetting? I am his manager. As far as Johnny Wyatt is concerned, you're out of business, Helianus, as of now. I'm warning you. Don't make things unhealthy for yourself. Come now, Helianus. You're the one who's flirting with high blood pressure. Don't get so excited. But, but you heard what he said, Mr. Harger. And I... everyone else will if you don't stop raising your voice. Besides, you know how sensitive I am to raucous voices. Now, if you'll just leave us alone, I'd like to talk to Mr. Valentine. Oh, sure, okay. But don't forget, I got a contract with Wyatt. Yeah, sure. That piece of paper and a dime will buy you a cup of coffee. And if you have any complaints, take them up with a boxing commission. You think I won, eh? Well, I... Your will... tantrums are childish, Helianus. Huh? I'm afraid we both have to admit that round number one goes to this gentleman on points. Thanks. Well, the gentleman better stay out of my way. We don't want to wake up floating in his shore. Hey, isn't that Pat Driscoll punching the bag over there? Yes. You see him in one of his more conscientious moods. He's actually condescended to work out today. Uh-huh. Well, no wonder Wyatt is the top heavy favorite. You stand to really clean up if he does approve it. When he does it. <laughs> Which uh, brings us to the crux of the matter, doesn't it, Mr. Valentine? Yeah. The Johnny Wyatt is going to fight the best he knows how. No matter which way you're betting or what you intend to do. I can't allow Wyatt to win. There's almost a quarter of a million dollars involved. Okay, what do you propose to do about it? Unlike Helianus, I don't indulge in lurid threats. I simply want to state a fact. If this bout doesn't come off as planned, neither you nor Wyatt will have much time to enjoy virtue's momentary triumph. Well, now, that was the purpose of this little visit. Now we both know where we stand. Oh, Mr. Hager, I understand this guy's giving you some kind of trouble. Trouble? Well, of course not, Driscoll. We were merely discussing business. Yeah. I was trying to find out how to bet Friday night. Mr. Hager here says you can't lose. All right, I'm a sure thing, so what? But I keep saying you can't win, Driscoll. Huh? Unless you got somebody in there to take a dive for you. What's that? You know what I think I'm gonna do? Hold it, Driscoll. I'm gonna nail you one, sweetheart, and see how you look splashed on the floor. Hey, look at what you guys done in Driscoll. Driscoll's out of your life. I believe it. Who splashed on the floor? I am impressed, Mr. Valentine. If I weren't betting on that reclining gentleman, I'd be tempted to applaud. Hey, buddy, buddy, I, I just see what you've done, the right cross you got there. Anybody managing you? Out of my way, Buster. I got places to go and things yeah, to do. Yeah, but that right cross. I, I... Now listen to Mr. Valentine carefully, Basher. Uh, I'm, I'm listening. I, I, get, I get what you say. Good, good, because this is very important. Don't you see? This is your chance to win a big fight, not even have to go into the ring. Well, how can I do that? Them keeping me here in the sanitarium. Now look, Basher, you know Hager took over where Salvador left off. And he's doing the same thing to other fighters that Salvador did to you. Uh, he, can't, he can't do that. Look where I am because of him. And I used to be champ. Oh, champ. 
We know that, Bash. Now, please, get the story straight. Johnny Wyatt wants to make this his last fight. And he wants to do a clean, honest job on Driscoll. I wish they'd let me in there. I'd show that young punk a couple of things. Yeah, Bash, yeah, I know. But you see, Wyatt's betting on himself. Every dollar he's got. His wife's depending on him, too. All the money they've saved to buy a gas station, live a decent life, is on him to win. Now, look, I'm no fight manager, and I want you to help me find the right trainer and things like that. No. But most important, how does a guy like Hager operate? I want to call every move he makes before he even thinks of it. Oh, okay. I'll put you straight. Oh, already, Hager's way ahead of you. What do you mean? What, what, what's the odds for Friday night? Why... It's seven to two for Johnny Wyatt to win. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean, Mr. Mr. Valentine. Before the fight, the odds are going to be even bigger for Wyatt. Hago will see that they are. How can he do that, Bash? Oh, a couple of stunts like he done with you in the gym today when you stopped Driscoll. He didn't have to hit the floor, but he did it so everybody would think he, was, he wasn't in shape. Yeah. But part of the frame. Uh-huh. And that gets in the papers, and everybody bets on Wyatt for a short thing. But, George, that means... Yeah, I'm beginning to see what it means, Brooksy. The odds should be on Driscoll. He's young, he's smart. If you just knew where to look, you'd see they got Driscoll training hard for this fight. Oh, this puts me on the spot, Bashy. Yeah, well, it, it's an old, old deal. Salvador started doing it with me when I was getting washed up. I was 32. That was, um, three years ago. Well, this is beginning to look like a work of art, George. Harker's got himself double insurance. If Johnny Wyatt doesn't throw the fight, Driscoll can probably beat him anyway. Driscoll, smart kid. Oh, boy, what a gold-plated goon guy I turned out to be. I let the Wyatts risk everything, their whole future on this fight. You will never can beat big boys like Harker when they got the... Fix on. I know, I know. Still, Johnny Wyatt's got to win Friday night. And I've got to make him. But how, Basher? How? We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Meanwhile, a word about the well-tailored car. Whether your everyday motoring is in the Puget Sound area, along the Columbia River, or in the desert, there's one way you can be sure of command performance from your car. That's by relying on high-octane Chevron Supreme gasoline. For this great premium quality fuel is climate-tailored to each different altitude and temperature zone in the West. That means wherever you motor, Chevron Supreme's blending agents command fast starts, command smooth acceleration, Command the extra power that makes your car great on hills. Just try a tank full of Chevron Supreme tomorrow and enjoy the command performance it gives your car on the straightaway, in heavy traffic, and up the steepest hills. Remember, Chevron Supreme for command performance every mile of the way. Ask for it at standard stations and at independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we'll take better care of your car. And now back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You find yourself managing, of all things, a heavyweight fighter, Johnny Wyatt, at the end of the road, facing a younger, stronger man. If your boy wins, Harger or one of his mobsters will see that you pay with your life for the fortune they lose in bets. Yet Johnny and his wife are also betting, betting everything they own that he gets the nod. So you're up a blind alley. If you're like George Valentine, you just put your head down and try to slug your way out. You know, I guess somebody must have pampered you when you were a boy. To think you can just walk into somebody's house and your very appearance is going to scare them to death? Please, Mr. Valentine. I've been waiting for this moment. Let me do the talking. And for once, Hager, I think you're going to do the listening. I doubt if you're going to feel like the same man when Mrs. Wyatt gets through describing you. You keep talking about my Johnny as your boy. You think he's through and he'll do anything you tell him when he gets in the ring. But Johnny is my boy, too. This is his last fight and he's going to fight it the way I want him to. We know what he's up against. But no soft-spoken piece of rubbish like you is going to change our minds. 
Any questions, Mr. Harger? No, just a mere statement, minus the dramatics. I thought it might carry greater weight stated in front of Mrs. Wyatt, who's supposed to love her husband. No soft-spoken piece of rubbish is going to change our minds. I admire models of virtue, Mrs. Wyatt, but only as curios you keep under glass. Why don't you speak your piece and get back to your gilded gutter? The simple fact remains. When I make a bet, there's always a payoff. Either in money or in that wasteful and business-like operation known as violence. But it's only been a couple of hours, Doris. Try to remember what you said. I am, I am. Your exact words when Harker came in. Now, you did all the talking. He just stood there. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying so hard. Don't rush her, George. Maybe it'll come easier if you don't make her try so hard. Well, we've got to get this right, Booksy. First, first I remember saying, please, Mr. Valentine, I've been waiting for this moment. Yeah, that's right. Then you said, let me do the talking. And you said, and for once, Harger, I think... I think you're uh, going to do the listening. Now we got it, Brooksy. Take all this down. Okay, George, but I still want to know why. Angel, this has to be the convincer. I've got to make Harger think I've got something on him. And before he realizes there's one important thing missing from the recording we're going to make. Well, what's that? Just his voice, Doris. But, George, you'll never get away with it. You just take the words down, Brooksy. Johnny and I have a date at the sanitarium with a basher. I was champ once, Wyatt. Remember me, huh? Remember me? Yeah, yeah, we all do, Basher. It's just too bad. You had a guy like Salvador, him. Sharp talk and wait, Basher. But would you please look at those pictures? I had to do a lot of talking to get the... Yeah, so... Yeah, yeah. I'm watching every move he makes. Look, look, this guy isn't going to get us anywhere. Well, you keep quiet, Johnny. Yeah, I'm watching. I got it. I got it. You can t- turn this thing off now, Mr. Valentine. I got the answer. Turn the projector off now, Mac, and put on the lights. Okay, what is it, Basher? Be- being the champ like I was, I got I got Driscoll's weakness. Just like that. Johnny boy, you can murder that guy in the first round. Me and how many bulldozers? Go on, Basher. Well, when the bell rings, Johnny boy, you rush to the middle of the ring with your dukes up. Like, like Disco was the worst enemy you ever had. You're not far from wrong. You've seen him in them pictures. All you got to do is all, all of a sudden let your hands drop down by your side. Yeah, you forgot to mention who carries me out. Will you listen to him, Johnny? When, when Disco comes in for the kill, he's wide open. You, you've seen it. That's when you give it to him, Johnny boy. But not, not what you're right. <laughs> not, not what you're right. Just how do you do it, Basher? You throw your left at him. That's the way he's least expecting. Well, the only punch I got is my right cross. Everybody knows the only thing I can do with my left is chase off flies. Like I said, least expecting. And the guy's got a grass jaw. You've seen it in the pictures. He won't know what happened to him. Valentine, let's get out of here. If I do this punch, he tells me I'll get killed. We'll talk about that later, Johnny. Thanks for your advice, Basher. And when you listen to this fight over the radio, you can say to yourself, it's just as though the Basher were in there fighting. Do like I said, Johnny, and you'll have him smelling the rosin before he knows what hit him. Yeah, and I could also be reading the alphabet backwards from then on. Do like your wife tells you. By that gas station, don't end up like me, the champ. Well, Tyler, let's get out of here. Sometimes I wake up in bed fighting my own shadow. Right? And then I faint. And I come a right cross and then a left. So long, champ. And thanks again. Well, this is about it, Johnny. The last prelim is on out there. How do you feel? Oh, just great. How does he look to you, Freddy? The Basher said you were the best trainer in the business. I've done the best I could with him, Mr. Valentine, in the short time we had. you got to remember, Johnny ain't as young as he used to be. Yeah, especially around the stomach, huh, Freddy? Doris, what are you doing here? You never, never want you to see me before a fight. Oh, this time it's different, Johnny. I got you into this. The least I can do is kiss you. Good luck. Valentine. All right. 
Here's that briefcase you wanted, George. Oh, thanks, Angel. I'm sure I'm going to need it. I'm betting on you, Johnny. Okay, okay, Freddy, that's enough. Can't help me anymore. Anything you say, Johnny. Did you ever see a wife like that? I'm just not good enough for her. I don't want her to see me on my face out there tonight. If they end up that way, she'll never know whether I threw the fight or not. Will you take it easy, Johnny? Hey, just like Joe Baloney, I'll better get your boy in the back row. All right. If this is going to be my last fight. I'm going to go in there and slug it out with Driscoll. Well, why are you guys looking at me that way? Come on. You boys know the rules. Keep your punches up, fight clean, break clean. Right. Get back to your corners. Okay, now, Johnny, I've only got a second, so listen. Fight this thing the way I want you to do it. It's your only chance. I'm not taking that punch drunk's word. Well, then take mine. Do it, and I'll even be happy to face Hargett. Hey, your mouth face, Johnny. Go to it, Johnny. <laughs> What's the matter, boys? Come on in. Just go give it a minute. Don't worry, Grandpa. You're gonna get it. Come on, boys. Get going. Oh, come on in, will you? Come on. Got my hands hanging down. Make it quick and fast. Okay, sucker. One, two, three. Hey, somebody, quick. Get the doctor from the boxing division in here. Crystal's really hurt. Where do you think you are going, friend? Hmm? Don't think you are leaving this arena. What's the matter, Helianus? When you got a gun in a man's back, no reason for your hand to shake like that. <laughs> Just excited. I cannot wait to see what is going to happen to you. Start walking. Okay. Johnny had more left in him than you thought, didn't he? What are you carrying in that briefcase, Valentine? Your last will and testament? Yeah, something like that. In here. This is Hager's office. Come in, Mr. Valentine. Sit down. Thanks a lot. If you remember, during our last conversation, there was a slight mention of a payoff, uh, one way or another. I have a very retentive memory, Mr. Hager, and you were very eloquent. Oh, why make with the fancy words, Mr. Hager? I know a couple of boys who can take care of him, but fast. Why need we hurry, Helianos? Do you know how much you cost me tonight, Mr. Valentine? I hope it was enough to send you to the poorhouse. <laughs> Not quite. But it was a serious blow. Oh, yeah. I think you can afford it, all right. A lavish office like this. Oil paintings. Custom-built phonograph. So many, many luxuries guys like Basher don't have in a sanitarium. But what to do with you, Mr. Valentine? Uh, of course, you must go, and eventually Mr. Wyatt, too. But how... If there's one thing I dislike, it's, uh, let's say, uh, crudity. Oh, brother, leave it to you. Never at a loss for the right word. You mind if I put on a record I brought along? I love good music. Oh, well, then you ought to go nuts about this when you hear it played back. Hey, what is he doing? He's got a gun in there. Please, Helianus. You don't seem to understand how gentlemen like Mr. Valentine and I do business. Just what have you got there? Suppose you listen, Hager. I'll put the needle down at random. But I think you'll get the general idea. I hope it's Sibelius. You keep talking about my Johnny as your boy. You think he's through and he'll do anything you tell him when he gets in the ring. It's all there, Mr. Hager. But Johnny is my boy, too. This is his last fight and he's going to fight it the way I want him to. If anything happens to me or Johnny, this will make sweet music in the DA's ears. You want to hear any more, Hager? Of course you remember... This gets better as it goes along. You know, you don't have to have a scientific trend of mind to know that RPM motor oil means low-cost car operation and longer engine life. But Mr. George L. Reed of Miami, Arizona, happens to be scientific-minded, and this is what he says, quote... As a mining man for 15 years, I have a pretty good idea of what proper lubrication means. 
For long life in your car motor, you must have absolute lubrication, and RPM really does the job. I'm sticking with RPM, unquote. I think you'll agree that Mr. Reed is a wise and practical man. And if you've been using RPM motor oil in your car regularly, you know why Mr. Reed prefers this premium quality motor oil. You know that RPM keeps your engine cleaner, fights off carbon, rust, lacquer, and other costly troublemakers. And you know that where ordinary oils fail on hot upper cylinder walls, RPM protects those hot spots at all times. So to give your car longer life, get an oil drain and refill with RPM motor oil. Get RPM at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we'll take better care of your car. Well, come on, Hargis, speak up. Do you want to hear any more? I'm not one to fool myself, Mr. Valentine. You may have something on that record. Oh, I can just as well play the rest of it, including your ill-advised threat. You know, violence. Shall I go ahead? Uh, No, you needn't bother. You you mean you are going to let them get away with this, Mr. Hargis? I will take care of him tonight and this record too. Be honest. Sometimes I despair of you. You're so... Petulant. Huh? Do you think Valentine would walk in here with the only copy of that record? <laughs> I got a million of them, Helianus. And they all tell the same story. Well, it was nice knowing you too. <laughs> Mr. Harker, just leave him to me. Stay I... where you are. The gentleman and I have made a bargain. Good night, Mr. Valentine. Yeah. Good night, Mr. Harker. Well, how do you like it, Mr. Valentine? We finally got our gas station. And there's even an auto court in the back. Sure looks swell. Well, we just thought we'd drop by, Doris, and see how you and Johnny were making out. By the way, where is Johnny? Oh, in the back somewhere. You ought to see him, Claire. Happy as a kid, can't find enough to do. But none of these things would have been possible except for you, Mr. Valentine. Well, thanks for the badge of honor, Doris, but all I'm doing is trying to make a living. Living. That's what Johnny and I are doing now. We're closer than we ever were. Why, why do you know in the spring we may even open up a hamburger stand? Oh, love and hamburgers. A reasonable substitute for a mink coat. <laughs> Something like that. All I know is everybody should be as happy as Johnny and I are now. For instance, you two could... Uh... <laughs> I mean... Oh, never mind, Doris. <laughs> Subtleties like that are wasted on our friend here. Oh, I know what Doris is driving at, all right. Oh, do you, darling? Yeah, but Angel, can we make it pay? Opening a hamburger stand. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Let George Do It stars Robert Bailey as George with Francis Robinson as Brooksy. Tonight's story was written by David Victor and Herbert Little Jr. and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Michael Ann Barrett as Doris, Tony Barrett as Johnny, Jay Novello as Basher, Louis Van Ruten as Harger, John Allman as Helianos, and Lester J. as Driscoll. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Easton. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>